Hello again and welcome to yet another product review. Today I have a special double feature from the developers of Vancio from their MatrixPad line of tablets. This is the Vancio MatrixPad S20 and the MatrixPad S21. With the S20 priced at $134.99 and the S21 at $109.99, both models fall within the mid-range tablet category at a price to suit your pocket. So what's the difference and why is the S21 priced lower than the S20? In this video, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the hardware specs and features and I'll also run some benchmarks to measure their performance and we'll see if the price is deserving of the product and which tablet may be right for you. So stay tuned, that's up next. So I'm back and inside both boxes the contents are the same. You get the tablet itself. One USB charging cable, a 5V 2 amps DC power adapter, and your user's manual and a gift card. So let's now have a look at their design, button placement, and ports. So here I have both tablets lined up equally alongside each other, and what you'll notice is that the new S21, which is the one to the left, is slightly taller and its bezel is slightly thicker than the S20 that sports a thinner bezel and is slightly shorter. Both models come with a 10.1 inch ISP display and has a 1280 by 800 resolution. Both models come with a front facing 5 megapixel camera. The S20's front facing camera is slightly to the top right and the camera on the S21 is directly at the top center. To the back of both models has an 8 megapixel rear facing camera, but the S10 comes with a flash whilst the S21 does not. Another difference is that the S21 has its internal speakers facing to the back, while the S20 has its speakers at the bottom edge. To the right side of both models, you have power buttons, volume controls, built in microphones, and headphone jacks. On the top of both models, you have Type-C charging ports. However, on the S20, you have a slim slot to insert a micro SD card, whilst on the S21, it has a long snap-off cover that you have to remove to access the port. If you look at the base of both models, only the S20 has its internal speakers positioned there. So I'll start up both tablets, complete their startup wizards, and proceed with their system and hardware information. So I'm back and here I have both tablets, the S20 is on the left and the S21 on the right. And to begin, let's compare their system and hardware information. On the system, it shows that both models have the same mainboard. The S20 comes with 3GB of RAM and the S21 comes with 2GB, both RAM types are DDR3. Both models come with 32GB of internal storage and Bluetooth 5.0 support. On the CPU information, it shows that both models are running on the same CPU which is a 64-bit octa-core Cortex-A55 processor clocked at 1.6GHz with support for 64-bit ABIs which means it can run 64-bit applications. Their display are powered by the same GPU which is the PowerVR Rogue GE8322 with a refresh rate of 60Hz and open GLES version 3.2 support. Both models have dual band AC 2.4 plus 5GHz Wi-Fi support. The operating system of both models is Android 9 Pi and both models are not rooted. The operating temperature of both models are low around 31 degrees Celsius. Both devices have the same number of sensors. And both models have the exact number of codecs and decoders to play HD 1080p videos. So in this comparison, the only difference is that the S20 comes with 3GB of RAM and the S21 has 2GB. 
So that's it for system and hardware information. Let's now compare the Antutu benchmark scores of both models. The S20 has an Antutu score of 79,451 and the S21 got a score of 96,225. So the S20 outperforming the S21 by 1200 points. I'll now test the responsiveness of both models. The response time of both models are the same. They are very responsive and I'm not experiencing any lag whatsoever. To test the entertainment features, I installed Netflix directly from the Google Play Store on both models. It's the official version with Chromecast and here you can see I have the same video open on both tablets. Both models don't carry a 1920 by 1080p resolution, hence why you don't see the HD icon appearing at the bottom of both videos. However, if you activate Chromecast, you will see the HD icon and the 5.1 icon appearing on both tablets. Both models come with the mobile version of YouTube and they can only play up to 720p resolution. I installed the same game on both models to test their graphics handling and I'll be using a Bluetooth gamepad to play this game on both models. Gameplay is smooth on both models and my gamepad connected via Bluetooth and worked without issues. Here is some sample footage from both models using their rear facing 8 megapixel cameras. The video quality is the same as expected seeing that they both carry the same hardware. In summary, the S20 and the S21 are very similar, but the S20 has more RAM and slightly better performance than the S21. The S21 however is slightly larger than the S20 and costs much less. So if you are on a budget, the S21 might be the right choice. And if you are looking for a budget tablet with slightly better performance and hardware, the S20 is the better of the two. So I've come to the end of my review. Thanks goes out to Vankyo for sending these two tablets for review. Links to both models can be found in the description directly below this video. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified via email when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.